morning. Welcome to Twin Lakes Worship Center. Now, if you've been staying tuned the last several weeks, I've been talking to you on a series called Do What's Right and how that if we do what's right, God will give us his blessings. Well, today I'm going to share with our church and with you the number one thing that you have to do that's right. If you miss this one, if you mess this one up, None of the promises that I've given aforetime will apply. So you stay tuned today and make sure if at all cost you get this one thing right so that you can get all of God's blessings. Stay tuned and God bless you. Great, great job, guys. If you have your Bibles, be turning to Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10. And as you're turning, I'm coming out of my suit. (laughs) I'll tell you something I learned a long time ago. That suit don't make you holy. It makes me hot. (laughs) Romans chapter number 10. How many of you have been here the last four, five, six weeks on the series of sermons I've been preaching that was entitled what? Just do what's right. How many of you have been here for that? All right. Today, I'm going to give you the last sermon of the series to do what's right. Now, for all of you that weren't here, I want to give you a quick recap of what we're talking about. Over and over and over in Scripture, the Bible has told us and showed us that if you want the blessings of God for your life, and we all do, amen? If you want all of the good things that God can offer you and your home, there's a simple solution, there's a simple equation. It's very elementary, it's not very deep theologically. If you want those things, here's what you've got to do. Just do what's right. The last several weeks I've been going through Scripture And we've been talking about the different things in the Bible that God says we must do if we want to do right in order to receive his blessings. For example, one of the uh, sermons that I preached, it talked about the importance of taking wrong. Y'all remember that one? That was particularly fun, wasn't it? Where scripture says sometimes in order for you to do right, what you've got to do is be willing to allow somebody to wrong you without you reciprocating your revenge. Do what's right and you'll get God's blessings. One of the messages we talked about was in the importance of us not passing judgment on one another. You you see, that's one of the most important messages we need to learn and hear today Because the Bible is clear. The manner in which you judge others is how God is going to judge you. So if you want leniency from God for all your mess-ups and screw-ups, let me tell you how you can get it. Don't be so judgmental on the other people around you. Do what's right. One message about getting along. If a man wants to have friends, he needs to be friendly. Don't be the argumentative, confrontational type of person. Just strive to get along. And I believe somewhere in that message, I'll use the phrase, if a man be ignorant, let him. Amen. You remember that? I mean, that was really some good preaching. <laughs> but get along. Because getting along with the people of this world is what God says is right. And if you do what's right, God's going to bless you. One of those passages in Proverbs talked about the importance of us not being manipulating type of people. That we're always trying to finagle and work things out so that we get the good, so that everything works to our favor, so that everything is the way we want it, so that we can be in control. Listen, don't be that kind of person. Do what's right. And when you do that, God will bless you. We talked a lot about the tongue the mouth, the speech, 
And over and over, especially in Proverbs, it talks about your mouth is either going to make you or break you. And you better learn how to control it and to use it the way God wants you to because that is doing what's right. And if you want God's blessings, then you've got to do what's right. Well, today, I want you to know, I'm going to give you the last final piece of the puzzle in doing what's right if you want God's blessings. Now, I've waited for this last one because this is the most important one. In fact, if you don't get this one right, listen closely. If you don't get this one right, none of the others are even going to matter. Let me tell you, if you are going to do one thing in your life right, you better make sure it's this one. And that is understanding, accepting, and receiving salvation based on the Bible. Not based on a church name, not based on a preacher, not based on a denomination, not based on what mama and grandpa told me, but based on the Word of God, because if you don't get this right, it does not matter what else you do, it will not matter. It don't matter. Do you realize, and I didn't until last night, that in the book of Proverbs, which is where we took all of these messages, salvation is not mentioned one time. The word salvation is not used in the book of Proverbs. The word redeemer is not used in the book of Proverbs. The words born again are not used in the book of Proverbs. And let me tell you why. Proverbs was written under the understanding that these promises and these instructions are being given to those who are saved. So therefore, if you're not saved, none of what I've told you for the last four, five, six weeks applies to you. You don't have that promise. You don't have the promise that God's going to bless your home if you do this. You don't have the promise that God will spare you from evil if you do this. Why? Because it's all based upon getting the first thing, the most important thing, right first. How do we do right? For salvation. I mean, is that not ultimately the question then? If nothing else matters and we can't get the promises and the blessings of God, if these blessings are only applied to the believers, then we need to know that we've got our salvation right. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's all kinds of opinions on this subject. So much that all across the world today, there are different churches and places of meeting that people are coming together and they're worshiping and they're rejoicing over this day and yet they have their own opinion of why. You see, there are some people that believe in order to be saved, it's based upon what you do. To be saved, you gotta go to church. To be saved, you got to take the Lord's Supper. To be saved, you got to be busy about working and doing in the church. And, and it's all about whether or not you're doing good or not. Well, I don't know about you, but when I read the Bible, it tells me that my righteousness, you know what that word righteousness means? That means the very best of Jeremy Short is like filthy rags before the Lord. So how am I going to do good enough to be saved? If God himself says the best you've got is like rotten rags. Jeremiah tells us that the heart of man is wicked. How can you be good if your heart is wicked? But yet there are some today that are basing their entire life, whether they get the blessings of God or not, their entire eternity, whether they go to heaven or hell or not, based upon how good they do. You know what's amazing to me about the subject of, of doing good? Whether or not it's good or not is based upon the opinion of the person doing it. You ever notice that? The other day, I was mowing at the house, doing a little weed eating, and I seen some weeds coming up around the corner of the garage. And I thought, I'm going to do good. I'm going to go the extra mile, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to cut all them weeds down. 
That night I found out those weren't weeds. I thought I was doing good when the judge told me that I wasn't. You see, good is based upon the perspective of the person doing it. Some people believe to get salvation right, it's all about religion. It's about religion. Whether or not your name is on a church roll, whether or not you are just showing up to church, Listen, you can show up here, and if your heart and mind ain't right about worshiping God and learning about God, you just as well went fishing. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. That was probably, forget that. Religion won't get you to heaven. Religion has absolutely nothing to do. Let me tell you what God saw and remembers about religion. It was the religious folk that nailed his only begotten son to the cross. Religion can be the downfall of society. You remember I said that. Religion can be the downfall to society. And yet some are thinking so long as they're involved in a church, so long as their name is on the roll, so long as the pastor preached their funeral, everything's going to be okay. Friend, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Some people believe that by, by method you're saved. They believe that if you go through a class, And at the end of the class, the teacher says, okay, now y'all have all completed successfully this, this course. Now you're going to heaven. Some people believe that just by association, they're going to heaven. That because mom and daddy were good Christian folks and because they're involved in the church people and they know this, that they're going to heaven. Some people believe that being baptized in water, you're going to heaven. Listen to me. Method has absolutely nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with a relationship, not the method. Some people believe that it's by knowledge. I'm amazed at how many people believe this. That it's by knowledge. That if I say that I know of God, or that I believe in God, that that means everything's okay with me. Let me tell you what the Bible says about knowledge. The Bible says Satan believes in God and trembles. Big deal if you believe in God. For about 25 years, I believed in Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just because you say you know there is a God. I know there's a president of the United States. He and I ain't went out to lunch lately. Probably ain't. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> this is church, not Congress. Let me tell you something. There's a big difference in believing in God and believing on God. You see, when you believe on God, that means you've put all your trust in Him. You've put, no pun intended, all your eggs in one basket. You've put everything you've got into believing on Him that He is alone the answer to your problem. So what is right? If everything hinges on getting this one issue right, then what is right? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, don't you listen to Brother Kevin. Whatever you do, don't you listen to Mo. Don't listen to Bart. Don't listen to me. You listen to God. And let me read to you what God says is right. Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. Boy, the print in my Bible just keeps getting smaller and smaller. (laughs) Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. Now listen, this is what's right. This is coming from God. This ain't coming from man. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, 
that God hath raised him from the dead. Now you must believe that or you wouldn't even be here today. That God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him, not in him, on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference, boy, I love this verse. Of all these good verses, I love this one and I'll explain it in a minute. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. I got a rich daddy. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now I want you to remember, I'm not telling you Jeremy's opinion today. I believe it. I'm not telling you Brother Kevin's opinion. He believes it. I'm not telling you Mo's opinion, and who knows what he's thinking. (laughs) What I'm telling you is what God says. And God says, if you want to know that you've got the most important decision in your life right, here's how you know. He said, the first thing is you've got to believe. You've got to believe. Believe what? I love what that verse said in verse 9. Look at it. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Let me tell you something. It ain't even faith anymore with me that God was raised from the dead. I know it to the bottom of my soul that Jesus is alive today. I know it because he helped me today. He helped me yesterday and he's going to help me tomorrow. If you're going to have your salvation right, you better believe this. Believe that God hath raised him from the dead. But now let me tell you, there's more to it than just that. Because if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you also got to believe that Jesus was dead. Does that make sense? Boy, y'all didn't know I was that smart, did you? Huh? That's what happens when you put a tie on. You got to believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our rotten souls to pay for our immoral sins, to pay the payment that you and I could not pay off. Jesus looked at mankind and he saw how despaired we was and God said, they can't come to the heaven I've created like that. And Jesus said, well, what are we gonna do? And God said, somebody's gotta pay for it. And Jesus sat there for a moment and he wiped the sweat from his eyebrow and he stood up and he said, daddy, I'll do it. Amen. Boy, that's, that's powerful. I got chills all the way down to my socks. Or no, it was sweat. (laughs) Jesus said, I'll pay it. Let me tell you something. There is no other mode. There is no other method. There is nothing else other than believing that Jesus died for your sins. And on the third day, on that glorious first Easter, Jesus come walking out of that grave, holding the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and said, forevermore you shall live through me. That, my friend, is what you must believe if you're going to be saved. But that isn't all the scripture said. It said, first of all, you've got to believe. But then did you notice it also said in there that you've got to confess? Look what it said again, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Look at verse number 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, if you believe that Jesus died, if you believe that God raised him from the dead, then you've got to put that belief into action with your mouth. There has to be a point in time with confession of the mouth. You said, God, I believe it. God, I ask for it. And God, I receive it. It's with the mouth confession is made. It's with the mouth that your faith is put into action. And I love the fact that it says, don't be ashamed. Let me tell you something. Jesus very publicly was humiliated. He very publicly 
was stripped naked. Now you think about that. In front of thousands of people, he was stripped naked. In front of thousands of people, men walked by and they cleared their throats and they spit in his face. In front of thousands of people, they came by and they plucked the beard from his face. They shoved the crown of thorns on his head. They put a cape around him and mocked him. In front of thousands, he walked up that hill. In front of thousands, he hung on that cross. Every bit of your sin was publicly paid for. And Jesus says, the only thing I say is that to come to me, you believe. And you confess. And when you confess, make it known. Make it known. Oh, friend, let me tell you, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. Let me tell you what I am. I'm proud to let people know I'm on God's side. I'm proud to let people know I believe in the Son of God. I'm proud to let people know that no, I'm rotten and undone and unperfect and got all these rotten sins, but because of Jesus, I can find forgiveness. That's not something to be ashamed of. That's something to be proud of. He says, if you're going to get this right, you've got to believe and you got to confess. There's only one final part. And that is make the call. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All the sweetest words ever to be spoken. Whosoever. You know what that whosoever means? That whosoever means anybody. Clarence, that's you. Jerry Don, that's you. Andy, that's you. That's me. That's whosoever. Look at the verse right before it. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For there is the same Lord over all is rich unto them that call upon him. You know what he's telling you? You remember all them riches and blessings I've been talking about for weeks? He said for all that call upon the Lord, he gives all of those blessings to all of them. Aren't you glad that he used the word whosoever? He didn't say just those with hair. He didn't say, those of you that's been burdened in light by not being fit, healthy, thank you, <laughs> healthy. You know, there's a lot of things a fat man can't do. I'm learning that. It is. You can't own a little sports car. You can't ride all the rides at amusement parks. And most mornings you can't tie your shoes. That's why I wear slip-ons <laughs> that fit perfectly. God said, whosoever. It don't matter if you're Jew or Gentile. It don't matter if you're tall or short, fat or skinny, black or white or yellow or green. God loves us all. And he said, whosoever believes and calls and confesses, you get all my riches. Amen. You get them all. God said, if you want all these riches, you better do one thing right. And that is you better know that you have received me not based on what man thinks or a church thinks or grandma or whatever but on what I say. Because you see, not only 
do you have hanging in the balance all of those riches and blessings that God can give you through your life? But dear friend, one of these days, your life's going to end. You know, we don't know when that's going to be. Just this morning, received a call. Someone told me, 50-year-old lady, gone. I know some of you think 50's old. But that's getting younger every day. We don't know how much time we got. And when our life comes to an end, let me tell you something. You believe it because God's word says it, not because I say it. Eternity is waiting. And based upon whether or not you have gotten this right, it will determine whether you go to a place prepared where there's streets of gold and crystal seas where all of the saints have gone before in a place called heaven or whether you go to a place that's been prepared for Satan and all of his demons a place where the Bible says the fire shall not be quenched a place where there will be wailing and screaming a place where the worm dieth not a place called hell Dear friend, I want to tell you, you've got a lot of important decisions in your life, but you never have one that's even remotely close to as important as whether or not you've got your salvation right. You better know that you know Jesus. Well, thank you for staying tuned, and I pray that God spoke to your heart today. And if you haven't got that one thing right, I pray today that in your own time, you'll pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. God bless you for staying tuned. And as always, we want to welcome you to come with us here at Twin Lakes Worship Center. Our worship hour is at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. So you come be with us. We'd be tickled to death to see you. God bless and have a great week.